hello guys uh, welcome to another section in uh, geology uh, the section will be purely based on rmr rating and uh, strike and deep related uh, questions so i would like to start the session from uh, uh, past paper question of last year right let me share, share the question quickly so please don't mind about the writings on the paper i couldn't find a proper copy um, right this is a question right so uh, this is a question based on rmr rating it's a bit different question we'll start from that right so there are around uh, two joints here right so in these two joints you have to calculate the rmr separately right so when it comes to rmr right there are certain conditions which we should uh, first consider right to find the rmr values so if you go to Uh, the standard charts there are some standard charts right let me show a standard chart quickly right right so here right so this is a standard chart right right so there are five values right so that is the rqd our uh, spacing right space and the condition of spacing uh, ground water table and the ucs values so each of these five parameters we have to obtain uh, the rmr values right but in our question there is a small change so if you observe this figure properly right so here these uh, if you see here joints joints are not perpendicular to the strike right here the strike is along the axis along the center so this is your strike so the dips are somewhat angled right so one is in this direction another another one is at six one is at 16 the another one is 45 so at this time the spacing is not this value right spacing is always the shortest distance between two two joint right so that is that is the spacing right this is not the spacing so here the tricky part is to find the correct spacing right and if you see rqd value is not given so you have we have to calculate the rqd value also right so when it comes to rqd we know we have to add up all the length of the rock fragment which is uh, greater than 10 cm so here every element are greater than 10 cm so the total length is 4 m and uh, the actual length of excavation is also 4 meter so rqd is obviously 100 right so if rqd is 100 if you come to your design charts right your rmr charts right you can see if rqd is 100 90 to 100 percentage rmr is 20 right so simple as that right we found out that so one part is over right so next is the spacing right so to find the spacing right we need to draw a certain figure right so we will see what is that so for joint 1 right so if you move to figure right so for joint 1 joint 1 actually starts at a certain point and goes continuously right joint 1 starts here and up to this point it is continuous so this is a continuous length so that is actually this is not the actual spacing right uh, the total length here is 2 meter right so but joint to go it starts here it ends here and again it starts here and it ends here right so here it is point 8 and again another point so first of all we have to find that joint length part right and please note that for joint 1 the dp 60 and for joint the uh, two the dp is 45 this, this this would come in handy when we are doing that you will see that why right so we'll move on to a white board okay right so now let's see so this is our strike right so there are two joints right at an angle right something like this so i'll extend this one so this length is let's say l so this is your dip this is your theta right the shortest distance between between these two joints would be the perpendicular distance 
This is the spacing, right? So spacing. So this spacing is equal to L into sine theta. So for joint one, right, our length was two meter, right? So that's sum, right? So spacing for joint one would be two times sine 60. So since the dip was 60 degree, right? So the simple solving will get 1.73 meter, right? So when it comes to joint two, right? The length part is a bit trickier. We saw one portion is 0.8, the another portion is also 0.8. But in between, if you see the figure, there is a spacing of 0.9, right? So you have to add these three and divide by three. So that is the length now. So the length is uh, 0 0.83, right? So this is just the length, but not the spacing, right? So spacing would be 0 0.83 times sine 45, right? So that is 0 0.59 meter, right? So the spacing part is done. So for RQD, we did that it is 100 percentage and the RMR value was 20, right? For each spacing, right? For joint one and joint two, right? So here, let's say it's joint one and joint two, right? So here also 20. Then for the second part, spacing. Now we have to find the RMR value for the spacing, right? So when it comes to spacing, again, we have to go to the chart, right? Right in the chart, if you observe, right, there is a column for spacing of discontinuities. In spacing of discontinuities, right, if you have to observe, uh, the first spacing for us was 1.73. 1.73 is in this range. For joint one, it is 15. And for the next, is it's 0 0.59. 0 0.59 means nearly it's 590 millimeters. So for second one, the joint spacing is 10, right? So 15 and 10, right? So if you go to a whiteboard, right? So here for spacing, one is here it is 15 for joint one and for joint two, 10. For next is the spacing conditions, right? Spacing condition. So there is a different chart for this entire part, right? So when it comes to spacing condition, right, let's consider joint one. So if, if you understand one, you can write the other one, right? So we'll move to the question, right? So here in the question, you see, they have given some conditions that is length, right? So the length that is 1.6 and the separation 0.56 the roughness, the infilling, that is hard filling, and the weathering. For each of these five conditions, there are different RMR values, right? So that RMR values are given in another chart, right? So that chart is right here. So this is that chart, right? So here, right? So if we see for the joint one, right? Uh, the length is 1.6 meter. So joint one length is 1.6 meter. So the RMR is four, right? For joint uh, one, the separation is 0 0.56, 0 0.56. So again, four, right? And then it is slick and sided, right? So then it is zero, right? You have to just find out the specific values. Next is it hard filling. Uh, less than 5 mm, right? Hard filling less than 5 mm, so four, right? So finally it is uh, slightly weathered. Slightly weathered means again five. So you have to add up all these values. So four, four, zero, four, five, right? You have to use these values and write down for uh, joint one. Similarly, you have to find the values for joint two also, right? So when you go to joint one, right? Four, four, zero four five isn't it so here there are five values that is four plus four plus zero plus four plus five right 
similarly for join two you have to find the values That's right so i have already denoted four plus five plus three plus six plus six right so the next is the groundwater condition right so the groundwater condition right groundwater condition right it is given to us as it is wet right so when groundwater is wet right let's see what is the value right so here see in the first column right first chart you can see in the fifth row the groundwater conditions are given if it is wet the rmr rating is 7 all right and finally the ucs value the ucs value is 125 so if it is 125 it comes under the range of 100 to 250 in the first row you can find out so the value is 12 right so for wet condition it is 7 and for the ucs rmr rating is 12 right so here for here wet condition we know this is 7 for both it is 7 right and for the ucs value right it is 12 right so you have to sum up to find the rmr rating for both the situations so for first one joint one it is 71 percentage so here it is 73 percentage right very easy right it's a simple question right the next part is they have asked us to find the adjusted rmr value right so a, a rmr so to find the adjusted rmr we have to just consider about the strike and the dip and uh, whether the strike is parallel uh, to the uh, tunneling axis or the boring axis so that part should be considered so if you see the question properly this is a thing for the bridge foundation so this is a foundation part right so actually we are bo uh, we are making an excavation toward this this axis is like this the foundation axis also would be in the same direction so both are parallel right so if it is parallel right we have a separate chart to find out that right so if you see this chart right yeah this one the bottom one right there are two sections one is perpendicular another one is parallel right so when you see we have to see the parallel one in our question right one portion has a dip angle of 45 and another one has a dip angle of 60. when the dip is 45 it is fair condition when the dip is uh, 60 it is very unfavorable right so if you just go to the previous uh, another chart there is another chart here the top one right here you see there are uh, the different strike and dip orientations and the different conditions so here we are doing it for tunnel foundations right when it found to foundation we saw that one was very unfavorable for joint uh, one and for joint two it was fair so for joint one you have to reduce the rmr by 25 and for joint two you have to reduce by seven right so when it comes to our adjusted rmr right for joint one right that i write in different thing for a rmr adjusted rmr for joint one you have to reduce by 25 so that is 71 minus 25 that is 46 right for joint two you have to reduce by 7 so 73 minus 7 that is 66 uh, right so out of these two right uh, the worst one is this one so absolutely if you design something for joint one definitely joint two will withstand those conditions so the further de designing part should be followed to the joint one since it is the least so the most worst scenario right for most worst condition joint one is selected joint one the rmr rating is 46 percent the further designing is done to this right so if you see they are asking us to propose an internal uh, in frictional angle and cohesion right so again we have to go to the chart in this case right so if you see right the middle chart right the rock mass determination from total rating right so our rating was 46 right if it is 46 it falls under class 3 right so if it is class 3 you can see the 
cohesion which is 200 to 300 and the values of frictions are 25 to 35 degree right fairly simple calculation right okay it's a easy part right so uh, i'll just brush up one more question in this and we can uh, go to our next part because it's fairly easy let's hope we will get a question in the paper this time so we can easily get some marks right okay so if you see 2000 uh, let's say another paper right yeah this one right so here so this is the thing I'm going to write on the PDF itself, right? So you see, there are certain values directly given, right? So you can use your chart, right? Uh, so RQD value is 80%. So if you see the chart, right? RQD, if the RQD value is within 80%, RMR is 20, right? So you can observe here, so this is 20, right? Right? I'll just quickly go through the values in the chart. I'll mark some of them and we will write down there later, right? The discontinuity spacing is 3.5, right? So discontinuity spacing is 3.5 means which falls here, right? So RMR values again 20, right? So groundwater condition is completely dry. So again, here this one, right? So uniaxial strength value is 358, so here, right? So your RMR value for the time being is 15 plus 20 plus 20 plus 15. So that is nearly 70, right? So the one thing is missing is the discontinuity conditions, right? So we'll see for that also. For the time being, we are having 70, right? So when you see the discontinuity condition, right? Let's go to that one right here. So already we have 70, right? According to the discontinuity conditions, they have said the length is 4.6 meter. So it comes to here, so two. So now it's 72, right? Separation is 0.45. So 0.45 means here. So now it's 76 uh, and slightly rough. Slightly rough means three, so 79. So soft feeling, less than five mm. So now here, so 81 and slightly weathered, right? Uh, and here, right? So already we had 70, so 70, 76, 79, 81, 86, right? So 86 percentage, right? Is the RMR value, right? So let's see, let's recheck again. So here, our RQD value was 80, right? So RQD is 80, RQD, ah, we did, initially we made a mistake, right? So this is 17, so totally, rather three will be reduced, so our value is 83, right? So, okay, so that's what, please correct yourself. So that is 83, right? So the next part is, they're asking us to find the adjusted RMR value, right? So to find the adjusted RMR value, we need to know the condition of the strike and all, right? So let we'll see, right? Yeah, figure. Okay, so this is the figure, right? They have said for the given figure shows the cross section of the proposed road, right? So this is the cross section, right? Cross sections mean the road's axis is either into the paper or outside the paper, right? So this is road axis. And uh, the joint pattern characteristic with respect to slope geometry, these joint sets and road trace are striking perpendicular to the cross section. So they have said the strike is also perpendicular to the cross section. So in that case, that is also into the paper or outside the paper, right? So this is strike. So that means these two parameters are parallel. So again, we have to see the parallel condition 
from the chart and the angle is 55, deep angle is 55, right? So I'll quickly move on to the chart. We'll check that there, right? Right, uh, right. if you see, it's parallel and deep angle is 55 means it is very unfavorable. If it is very unfavorable, you have to see this is a road construction which, which is based on slopes. So if it is slope, we have to reduce 60, right? So already we had 83, uh, if we reduce 60, our adjusted RMR value would become 23, right? So adjusted RMR value is 23. So we have to de design for that 23 percentage, right? So we'll move to the design charts. So in the design chart, if you observe, right? So the RMR rating is now 23, right? 23 means this one, poor rock, right? So the cohesion and the friction angle, right? Fairly simple, right? So very easy question. Let's hope we get uh, a question like this, right? In our paper, right? So the next part I would like to explain is uh, just a fundamental theory behind the strike and dip, right? So we'll quickly move to the whiteboard and we'll discuss that and we'll come back to the papers, right? So I'll, you will need, I'll clear this. Right? So we'll take a, a soil block, right? So bear with my drawing, let me see. How accurately could I draw, right? So, so this is our soil mass, right? So whatever the thing which we have considered, right? Right, so now let's assume we are observing this from a top view. Right, so we are going to draw the plan view, right? So this is a plan view it's from the top, right? Our plan. So you will observe some sort of strike, some sort of different layers, right? So for the time being, I'm drawing this as uh, vertical lines, right? That means these are different layers. So this is a particular layer, this is another layer, so this is another one, right? Uh, these are another ones, so different layers, right? So wherever you see a separation, so that separating line is your strike, right? So that is not always in north-south direction, right? So whatever the line you observe from your plan view, which separate different bits is the strike, right? So in our case, let's say for the time being, I'm keeping, keeping it as in this way. So this is the strike. So we usually denote strike like this. So this is strike. Right, so this is our strike. So dip would be denoted on either side. If it is dipping to the left in the left direction, if it is dipping to the right in the right direction, so by a small arrow, right? So this is a dip direction, right? So the dip angle would be later measured, right? So in the strike, so right, after finding the strike, if you take a plane, right, which is exactly perpendicular to the strike, right? So it should be perpendicular to the strike. So that is very important, right? So I'm drawing that perpendicular plane here. Right? From the horizontal plane, from the top plane, the angle of this is alpha. That is your true dip. I am taking alpha as true dip, right? So I'm marking this vertical height as L and this as A, right? So whatever the other angle which you're observing other than alpha is, right? That means if the plane is not perpendicular, so you will get some odd planes like this that is in green color, right? Something like this, right? right? Actually the perpendicular plane, again, I'll draw that in blue ink. This is the perpendicular plane, right? Okay, but we have 
this is somewhat rotated from the horizontal, right? So let's see. So this is our horizontal plane. So this angle is beta, right? So the beta is your apparent dip. That is not the correct dip, right? When we cut in other planes, that is the value which we observe. That does not mean that is the exact true dip. True dip is always perpendicular to the strike, right? So there is an angle between this um, apparent dip plane and the strike, right? So if you observe this from the top view, right? So you are observing this from the top view, right? So this would be your strike. That means in your plan view, right? You will have a strike like this, right? So I let me draw that line again, right? So there would be a strike and perpendicular to the strike is the true dip, right? So this length would be A and this would be your apparent dip one, right? So this is B, right? So I am taking that one as B, right? So you can't see alpha and beta there, right? But you can see this angle. So this is the angle between the strike and the apparent dip. So let's take gamma, right? So we can complete a right angle triangle here, right? So this is this angle is also gamma. So we can write sine gamma is equal to A by B, right? So similarly here, if you consider these two triangles, the blue triangle and the green triangle, from the blue triangle, you can write tan alpha. So since this is alpha, this is also alpha. Here, if it is beta here, this angle is also beta, right? So this is again beta, right? So tan alpha is equal to L over A, and tan beta is equal to L over B. So tan alpha by tan beta will give you B by A, so that is equal to one over sine gamma, right? So tan beta is equal to tan alpha times sine gamma, right? Sometimes this might be in cos gamma. So if it is in cos gamma condition, so you have to remember the angle would have been substituted. So substituted in the sense, so let's take, I'll write it in red ink. So if this is gamma, I'll take this angle as gamma dash, right? So if you have, if you want to convert this gamma in terms of gamma dash, right? You have to use uh, sine uh, 180 minus gamma dash, right? So in that manner, right? You can change it, right? So that is not the issue here. So you have to properly understand how the equation comes, right? And how it is derived. So derivation is whatever the angle you are rotating, wherever the apparent dip it is, this height L is common, right? So here also L, here also L. So using that L thing, we are uh, obtaining this expression, right? So you know what is true dip, what is apparent dip, and what is the strike, right? So, and you know what is the dip direction and the dip angle, right? These things are important to go to the next question, right? So the next question is uh, pretty much based on one of our uh, laboratory sessions, right? So I'll quickly, uh, discuss that so that we can uh, recollect our laboratory practical and we'll move to the next part right so here right right so here in this paper 2016-17 paper right sorry about the orientation i'll change it quickly uh, Right, it's the question number six, right? So this is the question, right? So I'll move to the map. Uh, I assume that mo most of you all would be having the paper so that I'll be moving to the map and doing the question and you will be having the hard copy so you can see in that, right? So here in the sixth question, they are saying they are, they are given us some particular data and ask some questions, right? Let me see. Right here, right? I hope you can see the entire figure, right? So here, 
in this figure the north is towards vertically upwards right so i'll quickly mark the north so north is vertically upward right so they have said uh, map as given for five boreholes at borehole a they have located quartzite at borehole a they have located quartzite and the deep uh, deep piece towards south at 45 degree and the strike is east to west so strike is east to west deep piece towards south and the angle is 45 degree right so so we can draw the deep through the sorry the strike through a so this would be a the strike right so they are asking us to draw the outcrop line in the first part they are asking us to draw the outcrop pattern right outcrop pattern means wherever the po points we are observing the quartzite in the surface that means the reduced level of the quartzite and the reduced level of the contour soil contour both are equal so at this point the reduced level of the soil contour is 40 so the level of the quartzite is also 40 right so the contour map is drawn uh, in uh, 10 meter intervals and the scale is given to us as 1 to 1000 so in that case one centimeter is equal to 10 meters right so here so we are traveling a vertical distance of in a contour right we are traveling a distance of 10 meters right for each interval so the angle of dip is 45 so what is the horizontal distance we have to travel right so that is also 45 since 10 45 is 1 so x equal 10 meter so if x is 10 meter in real case in the scale it is 1 centimeter so taking 1 centimeter line right we have to draw parallel strikes so this is 50 right this is 60 right and 70 right so why why am i increasing in this side so dip is given to us is towards south but i am drawing the line towards north so, so it is dipping towards night uh, south means it is reducing in that side towards south so towards south it has to reduce so from from up to down it has to reduce so 80 70 60 50 and 40 right so when the reduce levels are equal we have to mark those points so such one point is this one another one is 40 and 40 this one so that's all there is no any other 40 and 40 next is 50 and 50 so if you observe a uh, 50 and 50 uh, this is one point and there is another 50 and 50 this is another point next 60 and 60 if you observe this is 1.60 and there is another point 60 here if you observe for 70 there is one point here and that's it for 80 there is a, another point here right i think that's all so you have to connect this outcrop line so along this line you can see the quartzite visible on the top surface so that is what they are asking right uh, in the next part they are asking us to find the deep direction sorry strike direction for the marble right so in the marble right they have said at borehole b they have excavated 20 meter right here 20 meter at for b for b 20 meter excavation for c they have excavated 40 meter and for d they have excavated 50 meter so what is the level for the marble for level so you have to find the reduced levels right so 80 minus 20 that is 60 meter for c it is 100 minus 40 60 meter right and for d it is 110 minus sorry 90 minus 50 40 meter so obviously in a, when it comes to strike the reduced levels are equal so it is in the same plane right so b and c would be the strike line the strike would be along b and c right so to say the angle right you have to measure the angle from the north so let's say i'll mark a north here right and you have to measure this angle theta and you have to draw the strike so how would you draw the strike so this is for the rock part sorry this is for the quartzite this one 
and for the marble so from north our strike is somewhat like this manner so which is the theta angle right so the dot dot line is north our strike is not always along north right it can be in any orientation right so we don't know about the dip we'll see uh, determine the dip and the dip direction so now they are asking the dip and the dip direction right at point d so at point c you know the rock is at 60 meter right the level for the rock right i mean the marble rock at point d the level is at 40 meter right so here we have to draw a perpendicular line from d to the strike so let's say this l length is l so in the in the diagram it is l so i am writing here towards the right so in the diagram it is l so actually you have to convert this so actual value let's say capital l right so what is the height difference so if you draw the triangle right height difference is 20 the distance is l so this is your dip alpha so alpha is equal to tan inverse right? uh, 20 by l right so to find simple l you have to measure this using a ruler you have to measure this right so what would be our dip direction dip direction is towards d so perpendicular to this one with an angle of alpha right so fairly simple part right i hope you all could remember this and finally, they are asking us to find the borehole location at E and the depth of the marble layer, right? So to what depth we have to excavate. So here we are again, we have to again draw the perpendicular line, right? Measure this length, let's say M. So the measured from the diagram, it is M. Isn't it? From the diagram, it's M. So actual, let's say capital M. So we have to again think about the so this is alpha dip so this is m right so this is the uh, length uh, we don't know we have to calculate this x so x is equal to right m tan alpha isn't it so if it is dipping in this direction towards uh, towards d towards E it is rising right it is up right so you know the level of uh, uh, level of the strike so level of the strike is 60 right so level of reduce level of strike you know it is 60 so at E what would be the level 60 plus x right this is the level where would you encounter the bedrock right because towards this direction it is dipping this direction it is dipping that means this direction the height would be much higher right it would be from up to down right dipping means from higher height to lower height so when it comes to the other direction so it would be higher so uh, it is 60 plus x so excavation depth how much you have to excavate so the contour height is 110 so actually the bed is uh, at 60 plus x so you have to excavate excavate 110 minus the 60 plus x isn't it so you will get the final answer here right so fairly simple question you have to consider some amount of uh, general ideas and you have to handle this right so that is the thing when it comes to deep right so there's another uh, similar type of question right from the same paper question number seven right uh, regarding the slope failure right this is pretty much the same concept but somewhat different in some sort of calculations we'll see that right question number seven right this one right uh, it is about a rock slope right uh, a rock slope has been created due to an excavation 
for a rod right a rod cut to a height of 12 meter right and a force face angle of 60 the rock uh, which this cut has been made contains of weak plane of foliation plane which dips at an angle of 35 degree and uh, dips towards the slope face strikes parallel to it during a rainy season a 4.35 meter tension crack has been created at a depth of 4 meter sorry at a distance of 4 meter behind the crust right and filled with water to a height of 3 meter the above weak foliation plane uh, that is the sliding surface uh, the strength parameters are given okay so we have to draw a diagram right so i'll just give a general idea so that you can handle the entire part uh, about after that right so let's say there is a slope right so they have said there is an rock formation of height capital h right right so this is the slope of the rock right let's say angle alpha so there is another weak plane right like this so here beta right so there is a, in this particular question there is a tension crack developed behind the crust at a certain distance right so wherever the tension crack develops the theory is same right so you have to be be accurate while calculating the parameters that's all that is the difference right so let's say the tension crack is here right above the soil surface and filled with water to a certain extent y right the position along this failure slope uh, of this uh, this is field here the tension crack is located at a distance of x along this slope along this beta slope right uh, this length let's say this is given to us as l right okay right so here the first part is they have asked us to mark the forces right so obviously when it comes to forces there will be a thrust horizontal thrust from this water column that is v Okay, so V is the horizontal thrust, right, from tension crack. That is due to the water in the tension crack, right? Tension crack water. Right? So the next thing is there will be a seepage along this slope, isn't it? Due to that tension crack. So due to this tension uh, slope uh, seepage, there will be a up thrust developed. So that is U, right? and there will be a weight of this soil wedge so that's rock wedge right so let's say this is w that is the weight obviously you know and this one would be u so that should be drawn such that the three forces meet at one point isn't it equilibrium condition for three forces so this is u so u is the up thrust due to c page right and w is the weight of rock mass okay right? weight of rock mass that is i'll highlight that portion right so you have to be uh, careful when handling that and so this is the portion right from starting from here all the way to here within the tension crack so above the tension crack it won't fail because this tension crack increases that hydrostatic pressure over there so the fails below the tension crack right so the next part they have asked us to mark the force right and find the factor of safety right so you know so th this failure happens right due to the forces acting in it right so there are two types of forces one is the resisting one other one is the collapsing one which are the reason for collapsing right so the failure is occurring around this beta plane so the resisting ones would be acting upwards right 
So what are the resisting one? Just resolving of forces. So one is uh, double, resisting one, right? Uh, the soil is both cohesive and frictional, right? So there will be a cohesion resisting force that is C cohesion times X. So this is due to cohesion. So you have to consider that we are taking unit width of this, right? Unit width of rock mass, right? So we are drawing this calculation for unit width, right? And another part is due to friction, right? So we know friction from when it comes to friction, we use F equal mu R, right? So if we know the perpendicular reaction, we can find the frictional force. So what would be the perpendicular reaction? Perpendicular reaction would be U plus V sine beta minus W cos beta. So I'm subtracting W because it is in the opposite direction times tan phi. So this is how mu. Right? So these are the resisting forces. So what are the collapsing forces? Collapsing forces are W sine beta and V cos beta. See, just resolving forces in this direction, right? So factor of safety, so let's take this one as FR and this one as FC, right? So factor of safety F4S is FR by FC, right? Fairly simple. So here, now the problem is how to find U, V, and W, right? So for to find W, right, you have to find this shaded area. Yeah. So that to find that shaded area, you have to find this length, right? So this length is obviously, you know, H by tan alpha, right? So here next, you have to find this height. So that is H by tan alpha into tan beta, right? So now you can find the area of this larger triangle, right? So here there is an additional portion here, this part, right? Right? So to find this length, so then you have to reduce this L first. So that means, so this is L, right? So what would be the inside length? right up to here from here to here right this this length would be h over tan alpha minus l isn't it so this this length this one would be h over tan alpha minus l into tan beta right so you can find out so this is simple geometries right so you have to find the area, shaded area. And after finding the shaded area, you have to multiply it by gamma of rock. So you will get the weight. Weight is easy, right? So when it comes to V, right? So you have to take the tension crack, right? So this is your tension crack and with the water field to a certain height of Y. So the stress distribution would be something like this. At bottom, you get gamma W into Y. So this would be pushing, right? So what would be that stress? That is the area of the triangle. So half time gamma W into Y into Y. So that is gamma W Y squared by two, right? So similarly, when it comes to U, right? So V done, U is done. So when it comes, sorry, W is done. So when it comes to U along this slope, there would be a hydrostatic pressure developed here so, right, that is gamma W into Y, right, at this slope. So this is that X and it will eventually reduce to zero, right? Not that this is not 90 degree, this is not 90, right? So simply this is a triangle, right? So here it start from zero, sorry, uh, it start from gamma W Y and ends at zero. So the average value is half times zero plus gamma W into Y, Right? So that is average. So it it acts along the length x, so times x. So this is u. So now you know u, you know v, and you know w. Right? So if in that case, you can find all these parameters. C is given to us. So given parameters are C, phi, and gamma rock. These are given to us, right? 
So all the parameters are known. So you can find the factor of safety by just simply substituting it. Right? So the final part is state on the stability of the slope if the crust area is fully loaded, fully flooded due to over flood flow. Right? So that means the Y increases. Y increases means V increases. V increases means there is a high possibility for the slope failure because if we uh, uh, y increases again u also increase so there is an uh, seepage high seepage so there is a higher chance for the failure so you have to describe that so right so that is the thing in that question right so in a, another question which is similar to this one there was a part involving anchor bolts right so if I am correct, it is in 2016-17 paper, right? Yep. Right. So this involving anchor bolts, right? So in that question, right, I'll quickly show that question and I'll quickly go through that, right? So here in the final part, other things are very much same. In the final part, they are asked us to find what happens when there is an anchor bolt, right? So the anchor bolt uh, provided such that they are perpendicular to the failure slope, right? So that weak slope, right? In that manner, right? So here, if you see in our diagram, right? So if you see, so I'll draw it in a different thing. Let's say blue one. So the anchor bolts are provided here, like this. So this anchor bolt is provided such that it gives a force T, right? So if it gives a force T, right, it is perpendicular to the surface. So it does not contribute to collapsing, but it contributes when it comes to frictional part because the reaction would increase. So here we have to add another part in that uh, within the bracket, we have to add another part that means plus T into tan phi, right? So this increases the reaction. So there is a higher frictional force. So in that question, they asked to find the T if factor of safety should be two. So already while you are handling the question, you would have found W, you would have found V, you would have found U. These parameters does not change. The only addition part is this T, capital T. Due to that, the fact, new factor of safety is two. So simply you have to substitute in this equation and find the capital T value. So very simple parts, right? Uh, I hope this question is also comes to this paper so that we we can somewhat handle two easy questions, I guess, right? I hope uh, you would have got some idea behind uh, the strike dip and uh, uh, about RMR ratings, right? So. Uh, I'll meet you all soon with another video and keep supporting by subscribing and press the bell icon for instant notification, right? See you all soon.